All right, everybody, welcome back. So this video is gonna be how to make realistic concrete. So if you have a model train layout and you're using pink foam or any type of foam and you wanna make it look like concrete, this is the video for you. So let's get started. All right, so now we're gonna go over the items we're gonna to need to uh, complete this project. So we're gonna start off, obviously we're gonna have our pink foam and then we're gonna use a couple different colors. So we're gonna start off with a black gesso paint. This was made by Liquitex, very good paint to use. Followed by chalk color paint. And the name of this paint is called uh, Cocoon. If you look at the color, it represents uh, concrete to an extent, but we're gonna, we're gonna add another color to it. And then we're also gonna try out a little of this rain gray on it as well. So a couple other items you're gonna need. Obviously you're gonna need a paintbrush. We're gonna need a couple of these cups for the paint. Hobby knife. Scale ruler. And we're gonna need a couple of these. And these are not your regular sponges. This is called a grout sponge. And you can get, you can get them at Home Depot. They're about, about two bucks a piece, two, three dollars. And you cut them up in these little squares like this. And when we get going, I'll show you what we're gonna do with these. But make sure you have to get the grout sponges because of how fine they are as far as a uh, sponge. You don't want the regular um, dishwashing sponge. You want the grout sponge. All right, so uh, let's get started. All right, so now we're gonna paint the uh, black gesso onto the pink foam. And the reason why we want the black gesso is when we cut in to the uh, pink foam when we put our expansion joints in, we, we do not wanna see uh, pink foam, obviously. So let's get started. And now with this project, this paint goes a long way. So I don't have a lot in there. It's just enough to get the project done. And when you, when you brush it on, you don't want to put it on heavy. You just want to put it on nice and thin. Now this stuff, I recommend this stuff because it works a lot better than your normal craft paint. This will dry um, to a matte finish. So it's, there's no gloss to it. For demonstration purposes, you know, we're not gonna paint the sides, obviously. It's just wasting material. But what we're gonna do is, we're just gonna coat, lightly coat the top. This is a water-based product, so you can use uh, water to clean it up. And when you're working with this pink foam, you're gonna try to stay away from any type of uh, solvents because it will eat up the, uh, the pink foam. But I noticed that there's a lot of modelers out there using pink foam um, to make uh, the railroads, which is fine. And I've used it before in modules and I definitely use the pink foam in other, in other applications. So. Now, once you have it coated, you're gonna wanna let it sit and dry completely before you put your next coat on. So we're gonna let this dry and then we're gonna come back and then we're going to go to the next step, which is sponge painting the cocoon chalk paint on. So. I'm gonna let this dry, we'll be right back and we're gonna get started on the next step. All right, so the next color is uh, rain gray, uh, but any light gray will work. So you don't have to buy this specific brand. Um, uh, if you want this specific brand, you have to go to uh, Joanne's Fabrics sells this, or you can order it online. All right, so we get another sponge. Move this out of the way. So there's our, our color. And again, same technique. And the reason why I'm using another color is when you go out and see and look at concrete, it's a multitude of colors. It's not just one color.
And again, we're not looking for a complete coverage. We're just looking for randomness. And I'm trying to achieve a nice, worn, concrete look. So, kind of sort of like that. Don't worry, we're going to add another layer of weathering on it. So it's really going to look like old cracked concrete. All right. So I'm going to finish this up and we'll come right back. All right, so now it's dry. And you can tell that there's a nice little... Uh, color variation so you can see that there's black paint underneath it you have your cocoon color and then you also have your rain gray now I could go back in here and hit it with another gray if I really wanted to but uh, I'm just trying to illustrate a point on how to create realistic concrete and you don't have to spend a fortune to do it so you can easily do it with three different colors so I think it looks pretty good for what it is and the next step is to put our uh, expansion joints in. So let's get started with that. So the, the, next, and the next step here, you're going to need two pieces. You're going to need, or two tools rather. You're going to need your scale ruler. And you're also going to need your cutting tool. Your uh, whatever, your number 11 blade. Now, just a quick thing when you're using uh, cutting tools make sure you protect yourself all right use eye protection be careful when using sharp tools you can't be too careful with this stuff all right so please be careful when you're using cutting tools so why don't we do this why don't we start cutting uh let me check the blade looks decent let me just test something out here just want to make sure i don't have a yeah it should be fine okay So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start scribing in the uh, expansion joints. The best way to do this, and I'm going to do it at an angle. I'll just line it up like that for now. Now, you don't have to press down, but let me change the camera angle really quick. Hold on one second here. There we go. So you don't have to press down hard with the blade. Let the blade do what it's gonna do, all right? Like that. Then flip the blade over. And go through a second time. All right, and then what you want to do is line it up again. Make a cut. Now, there is a line there, but the reason why that we take the blade and turn it and then drag it through again, it opens up the line ever so much there you go. There's your expansion joints. And there you go. Now you can see it really good. So this is why we put the black paint underneath. So that line really shows up nice. Now, I did not press hard on that blade. I let the blade cut itself or do the work itself. All right. So we're going to continue on. Make sure that's in focus for you. I'll just flip it over like this. 
And what I like using this um, scale ruler for is that it gives a nice even space. And then one more. I'll make sure it's lined up properly. All right. So now I'm going to reset and then we'll come back and we'll do the other, the other side. Alrighty. So now we're just cutting the other, the other angle. And the reason why I'm going so slow is because if you do this quickly, there is a good possibility that your blade can slip and then you have a crooked line and you don't want that. So you want to make sure that you take your time and do it right so it looks perfect. Looking good. So I'm going to finish this up and then we'll be back. All right. So if you take a look at the uh, expansion joints now, this, this piece has really have come to life and it looks very similar to concrete. All right. Um, so when you start adding expansion joints to it, it just makes it that much more realistic. So the next step right now is we're going to start messing around with some uh, weathering powders now to add another layer of detail to it. Now we could add some cracks if you wanted to, but right now I'm just going to focus on some weathering powders. And then also I'm going to go over with a little bit of uh, ground foam to uh, put in some of the cracks just to show you what can be done with this piece. So let me get set up with my uh, weathering powders and we'll be right back. All right, now we got the weathering powders ready to go. And I'm going to show you. So I got the brushes that, I got a set of brushes here that are just used for uh, powders. But I'm not going to use this set. I'm going to use the smaller brushes. I have a, reassigned some of my regular paint brushes to be brushes for my weathering powders. Now, once they become weathering powder brushes, you notice I put tape on them. That's the only thing they're for now. Weathering powders will tear up your brushes. So, you know, if I would make any type of recommendations is to, when you go to the craft stores, buy like a $10 pack of brushes. Um, so if something happens to them, you're not going to be too upset. And, you know, when they go on sale, uh, get another pack and just have, a, you know, a good supply of brushes. But, um, you know, these are the regular brushes that I use. For weathering powder so there's no really there's no secret to it so now the, the weathering powders i'm using now are bragnan weathering powders some i haven't even opened up yet um but these are the ones that i use the most so why don't we start off with a little bit of um i don't know let's see let's start with a dark brown now you do not need a lot of weathering powders uh to uh, achieve a nice result. And basically what you want to do with the weathering powders is lightly just work it into the expansion joints. 
And what it's, it's going to do is create a nice shadow for you and show more depth in the actual expansion joint. And you can actually switch colors and actually go in there with a with a, even a darker one if you really want your expansion joints to pop. So you can start seeing the shadows starting to form now. And if you think about it, you know, you get all types of dirt and debris that falls into these expansion joints. And then I'm gonna show you with some ground foam, you may have some grass popping through. So I'm gonna finish up these, these expansion joints and we're gonna come back and then I'm gonna do the next step, which I'm gonna do an overall powders on this to make it uh, more realistic. All right, so uh, we'll be right back. All right, so now that the um, the expansion joints are done, now what we're going to do is now we're going to work on the individual squares just to add a little bit, again, another layer of weathering and um, just a little bit more realism here. So now we're going to switch to a uh, dust bowl. Let me see if I can. There we go. So we're going to use this color here, which is a dust bowl brown. Now, um, the great thing about this stuff is a little bit goes a long way. This is more, it will give the appearance that there's dirt on the, uh, on the concrete and you can see the, the whole area changing already. Oop, too much. The great thing about this technique is you can't mess it up. And I'm just doing like a stippling type of technique. So there's no, there's nothing crazy about this technique. It's pretty simple to do. And if you want, then you can go over with a little bit of gray too. And again, another layer of weathering. One thing about weathering and adding layers, if you normally use three colors, use six colors. If you use six colors, use 12 colors. Take a walk outside. Obviously not now because of the around where I am, we'll get snow everywhere. But in the springtime or in the middle of summer, just take a walk outside and take a look at what colors you have going on. And you'd be surprised how many colors you can see. Especially in concrete or or in the, or in the uh, ground cover and woods and Again, it's just so much, so many different colors that you can add to a model just to make it more realistic. Okay. <clears throat> Not bad. Looks pretty realistic to me. <clears throat> All right. So the next thing we're going to do now is we're going to work on our um, ground cover. And then, uh, then we'll finish up this uh, video. So give me a minute to reset 
and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, so now we're going to be at the final part of this uh, video. And I'm going to be doing the actual uh, ground foam. And I decided to do a little extra on this one. So let's go over the stuff that we're going to need for this step. So we're going to need some glue. And the glue that we're going to use today is canopy glue. Highly recommend it if you're doing a project like this. The stuff is great. It dries clear. It's great for scenery. I started building craftsman kits with this glue. And um, it's definitely one of my favorites. All right. So I already put a little glue on a palette. You're going to need toothpick. And then we're going to be using... Whoops. Sorry about that. Flock and Turf by Scenic Express. EX881B. And then we're also going to use product number SE6623, which is Super Leaf, leaf litter. All right. So you're not going to need a lot of material. So let's grab a cup. When I, need, when I mean not a lot, all you need is a pinch. All right? Put that in a cup. Then, the second cup, and we're going to get our leaf litter. Now, with the leaf litter, this stuff is great. And you don't need a lot of it. Just a pinch of that too. Okay. So we'll put that away. Now. Let's start over here. So you're going to take your glue... On your on your uh, toothpick and just gently put it on the uh, expansion joints and then let's assume that the grass is growing up here And then maybe a touch down this way. Now we're going to take our grass blend and sprinkle it on. Don't worry, it's going to look good in a second. And you take your cup. Tap the piece. Now, obviously, if this is on your layout, you're just going to have to just blow the excess away. But for this purposes, I'm able to um, do it this way. So now you have your grass growing. Now, to say if you, you want to put maybe some leaf litter in. Just say a little pile of leaves that have been collecting on this piece. Ooh, too much glue. Then you take your leaf litter and do the same. Now, what I like to do with the leaf litter is I like to crush it again with my fingers just to make it a little bit smaller. And then you sprinkle it on. All right. 
So I'm going to come back in a minute and then uh, we'll finish this piece up. So give me a few more minutes and I'll be right back. All right, everybody. So the uh, Woodlick Scenics uh, fine turf was used as well. And it's earth color. The number is T1342. And I'll show you the final piece. So the only thing I did is I added the fine turf and I used the fine turf over in this section here, a little bit up here, and then over here as well. So it just adds another layer and I could have added more colors, but I think everyone understands the, uh, the spirit of this uh, video. So the uh, foam is actually a real excellent uh, medium to make uh, realistic concrete. And as you can tell, it looks pretty good. So uh, the grass that grows through the cracks is random. So again, you can't mess this up, whatever you want to do as far as that. If you're really curious, you can just look it up on the uh, internet and I'm sure you can find examples of cracked concrete with grass growing through it. And then you can use that as your uh, modeling surface. But um, as you can tell, when you're using different colors, uh, powders and then scenic, the more layers that you put on, the more realistic that your piece is going to be and just, just proves how realistic it can be. So I hope that um, I hope that everyone really enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment. If you haven't already, please subscribe, hit the bell so you can be notified. There's going to be a lot more of these coming, these types of videos coming. Um, so again, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for watching. Uh, and thank you for, for your support of this channel. So uh, I hope everyone has a great night. And uh, give this a try. You're going to like it. So this is Ron from New Haven Rails signing off. Have a great night, everybody. And see you at the next video.